Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Damien with Rosie Side Farm. We're doing a market farm or market garden update. It's October 7th um, here on the Eastern Shore of Maryland, Zone 7B. So as things have been heating up, so have our problems. So we start out in our determinant tomatoes and um, they're at the end. You know, there are no new, no new uh, blossoms coming up. Now we do have some indeterminates that are growing here, but these were staked up um, tomato cages and wind, rain over the time has just knocked everything down. So right now it's a mess, but it's still producing. There are still tomatoes on the vine. And it's Tuesday, we had our farmer's market on Sunday. So um, you won't see a ton of ripe fruit out here, but they'll be ready for next Sunday. Moving on to our Roma tomatoes. Now we didn't buy any Roma tomatoes, so we got some mislabeled plants when we started this thing out. But the Romas, as always, producing pretty well, just not the greatest seller at the farmer's market. So what we're gonna do this week, we had a few people ask us for green tomatoes. So we're gonna have a handful of quarts um, of green tomatoes with us as well. People looking to make those fried green tomatoes. But th things going decently well in the determinant um, tomato section. The problem is they're done producing for uh, for the year. So once they are, this whole section will be cleared out. We have a mass of sunflower in the middle of our market garden for no reason. But sunflower, I mean, look at the, the trunk on this thing is almost like a tree. Coming into more tomatoes and all these tomatoes will be ready by our Sunday market. We got our pigs in the background there in their pen. When we come to harvest and there's a, a piece of fruit that we can't sell, we can't eat ourselves, it goes over into the uh, to the hog pen there. So when we come out here, they think a, uh, a treat's coming. So into our peppers, jalapenos, it's so easy to grow. They've been pretty prolific. I mean, we sell a quarter two every week at the farmer's market so far. Not the hugest seller in the world. I mean, they just keep coming. We keep harvesting and they keep coming. So into our bell peppers. So our bell peppers, our peppers have done better than we've ever, ever done before as far as growing peppers. And we have a variety here that are I think the tag might be over here. It's a tag laying on the ground. But our purple beauties, we actually have two, two varieties of a, of a darker pepper. One was a purple beauty and one was a chocolate beauty. And when they are in our little courts that we sell out of, there's, there's one of them. Those courts sell every time. So we do have a one that's damaged here, from insects or whatever. So pigs get a little snack. So if I had to do over again, we would grow a ton more peppers, especially how well they did. Another little experiment we had was our white eggplant. So we didn't have any for market last week because we kept them all. My wife makes a eggplant lasagna, like a vegetable lasagna that we're pretty fond of. So we kept, we kept them for ourselves, but they're coming along. We, we should have some for the market this week unless we decide to eat them. Over here is our second planting of tomatoes and they are indeterminate tomato. And they are an heirloom tomato. And I mean, they're growing pretty well. The problem with them is, is that they have an odd shape, which isn't a problem for me. But when people come to the market, they look at them and mention, not really good for slicing for tomato sandwiches. So I think that's cost us a few, a few sales. Our cucumbers, I mean, they have been extremely prolific, but it looks like they're starting to come to the end here. Some yellowing the leaves. 
But if you look, I mean, this cucumber is way, it's not, not way past time. I like to pick them just slightly smaller than this, but that'll do. So with the cucumbers, we've got to pick, gosh, like almost every day, um, at least every other day, because they, they grow like absolute crazy. So here's our heirloom tomato patch. And there's tomatoes everywhere, but there's also diseased and cracked tomatoes everywhere. I see one right here. So we just had rains that might be the cracking there. The pigs will get that. Here we go, another one. Got some cracking. I like to think about it as planting my uh, my volunteers for next year. But I really wish we had another um, type of tomato planet right now. But live and learn. This is our first um, opportunity or first first shot at a, a market garden. So we'll learn next year. Over here is where we had our first planting of squash. That has since all been ripped up and I actually planted more tomato plants with the hopes that we'll get a harvest before the frost. So over into our squashes. Now this could be a corn squash right here. And we've been fighting a battle. You'll see some diseased plants, some bare spots. We've been fighting a pretty good battle with squash bugs, vine borers, you name it. But there's also a decent harvest in here as well. Once I find some fruit here, I'll, get, I'll show you. I know over here in our acorn squash that has been ravished here by bugs, that there are some acorn squash on the vine. So we'll get a harvest out of that, even if it's not huge. Here's another spot that bugs have gotten to pretty well. But we've got pumpkins on the vine. There's a flower there that has so many bugs on it. It's ridiculous, I'm not sure if they're pollinators or something that's not very good. White pumpkin growing over there. So this whole entire row is nothing but pumpkins, decorative pumpkins, jack-o'-lanterns, different heritage breeds that just look cool for those fall, um, those fall displays. So here's some of those bugs. Those look like cucumber bugs. They got a bee just flying there to pollinate. That's not good. Well, the bee's good, but everything else isn't. Just more of the damage here to the pumpkins. And we've been fighting a good fight. Last night I sprayed with soapy water. And I was a little skeptical whether that would work, but I was watching squash bugs die, you know, moments after they got hit by it. So it was working. Here we have our cantaloupe patch, which again made it way too big. Right next to some butternut squash, which I didn't think I planted butternut squash. We got a pumpkin over there. Like I said, this whole row was gourds and fall type squashes. We have cantaloupes on the vine as well. But just a patch way, way, way too big of cantaloupe because they'll sell for maybe two or $3 at the farmer's market. They're not huge. So this space could have been used for something a lot more profitable. One pumpkin or gourd that's been pretty successful for us are these little decorative pumpkins. So they kind of fit in your hand. There's a really odd looking pumpkin there. So the hope is we can keep these things alive at least until I think September, you know, the first market in September would be appropriate to bring pumpkins to. But, you know, we, we had to pick one pumpkin just because it had fully matured, the vine was dying back, 
So not sure that we can store them and keep them viable for the market, but we're gonna give it a shot. Here's our late pumpkin, late planting of pumpkins. These are a flat white heirloom variety. And the jury's out whether they'll, you know, they'll fruit in time for the market. And then just another handful of tomatoes that may or may not grow. This whole section here I was very excited about is our ground cherries. And since then I've become less excited because, I mean, they look fantastic and there are ground cherries on them. Um, try to find them, there's one. Those ground cherries are on them and there's a bunch on the ground that aren't ripe. But they're, I, I grew one of these plants a few years ago at our old house and it was enough ground cherries that we could have sold off that one plant um, at the market. They're just not ripening up at the rate that I wanted them to. When they do ripen up, you gotta get to them quick or they dehydrate and just become absolutely just useless, become nothing. Got our turkeys right next to our garden. They're hoping for a snack. All right, so this is Damien with Roserside Farm. That's our, uh, our market garden update here on August 2nd in Zone 7B on the Eastern Shore of Maryland. Check us out in a couple weeks. We'll do another one. See ya.